Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 255. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. Hello to my replay warriors as well. Let me say hi to a few of you and we'll jump into tonight's projects. Hi Cheryl, Re, Lori, Denise is here, Angela, hello. Hi Margo. Let's see, Christy, Donna, Vera, welcome. Hello, Amber from Utah, Bobby, Margaret. You guys are awesome. Thank you for joining me tonight. We're gonna to be using the Trimming the Tree bundle. Here's a quick sneak peek. We are doing a jo Joy Fold card. I just have a gift card attached with glue dots. And then this super quick and easy tried and true classic, a sour cream holder or sour cream container. It holds a Hershey's nugget great um, paper conscious project. It uses a four inch by four inch piece of designer series paper. So we're going to create those tonight. Brian, are you ready for your cameo? My husband Brian is watching for your questions and comments. If you do have a question tonight, be sure to put Q colon in front of that question. That will help us cue the questions during our Q&A segment, which we will hold questions until the end of tonight's live stream so that I can focus on tonight's projects. So don't forget Q colon. When you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. Please use my current host code on orders under $150. And the easiest way to do that is to use my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically add my current host code. Now, if your order is $150 or more, don't use the host code or remove the host code. You will earn stamp and rewards on that order, but you'll still earn my Pixie Perks. We've got a couple of promotions happening. During the month of September, we've got weekly deals. And on Wednesdays is a special opportunity where the current week's deals and next week's deals overlap for about um, 16 hours or so. I don't know if I'm doing the math right, but here in the US, because we operate in multiple markets, if you go to the link, thepaperpixie.com forward slash weekly deals, you'll see that there's extra products today. That will be until 11.59 p.m. Mountain tonight, Mountain time tonight, at which point just the next week's weekly deals will be available. So be sure to check on Wednesdays. You can usually double up on the weekly deals. And tomorrow we are having a 24 hour stamp sale. This will be 15% off all of the annual catalog stamp sets, excluding host sets, because those are already discounted and can only be purchased with stamp and rewards. But tomorrow only, so 12 a.m. Mountain Time to 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time, thepaperpixie.com forward slash stamp sale. That will take you to all the stamps that are discounted. So if you've had your eye on a few stamps from the annual catalog, tomorrow is the day to get them at 15% off. Now, in most cases, maybe all cases, the bundles are still going to be cheaper than purchasing the stamp set and the dies separately during the stamp sale. So just keep that in mind. I would just stay focused on stamp sets that you wanna to add to your stash, but grab them at a discount tomorrow. Now added bonus, if you are on my team or you'd like to purchase a starter kit, both of those are great ways to sort of double dip current demonstrators get their demonstrator discount off of the already discounted price. So tomorrow is a great way to take advantage of that. Also a great time to purchase the starter kit because you can get a lot more stamps uh, for your $125 in product that you can get for 99. So paperpixie.com slash stamp sale and the paperpixie.com slash weekly deals. You can check those out. The stamp sale link will not work until tomorrow, or I should say midnight mountain time tonight. So let me give you another quick sneak peek of what we're creating tonight. And then I've got two things for show and tell from the kiddos. We put those off to the side. Nolan turned seven this weekend and he got a few new Lego sets. This is a Star Wars X-Wing fighter, I think is what it's called. <laughs> so he has been saving these to work on after school because he says he gets bored after school. So um, he'll, he'll have another one to show you next week. But we went to the Georgia Aquarium 
um, on Sunday to celebrate his birthday, where we do Georgia Aquarium in the morning, and we went and got barbecue for lunch, and then donuts for dessert. So it was a good birthday for him. And then Lily, I'm not trying to pour salt into any wounds here, because this paper pumpkin kit is no longer available, or there's no refills available, but this was the August paper pumpkin kit, and Lily gets her hands on my paper pumpkin kit each month, so she... I love it. I don't even have to help her. She knows exactly which ink pads to grab because she likes using the full-size ink pads, and she just goes to work. I thought she did a really fantastic job with these. So super cute, super pretty. I've seen so many fantastic alternate projects as well if you have this kit, so be sure to check out the Paper Pumpkin Facebook groups for those alternative projects. Alrighty, we are going to jump in tonight's project. I do want to give a shout-out. No, I don't have her name. I'm so terrible of remembering remembering names, but this was a swap that I got from a fellow demonstrator at Backstage and she gave me just the sweetest feedback and warmed my heart and I'm so sorry if you're watching Please let me know if this is yours, but I thought this was the cutest little sour cream Holder sour cream container treat pouch, whatever you want to call this this comes from the Angel Policy stamp set. I think it's called Limited Edition. But isn't that just like a classic? I don't know, I love the size of this, so I sort of deconstructed it. Now she had a really delicious chocolate inside of it. I tried to see if I could find these available online to order. The brand is Ethel M Chocolates, but this is a perfect fit for the inside of this. Now I've got, obviously have a whole bunch of Hershey's Nuggets, so that's what I'm gonna put inside of mine, but this is a really cute idea. It's a nice little thick square piece of chocolate, so if anybody happens to know where to find those, let me know. So why don't we go ahead and do the treat container first. It is so, so easy. I love it. We are gonna be using the Trimming the Tree Bundle. <clears throat> I'm gonna bring in a couple of things here to show you before we jump into it. So the Trimming the Tree stamp set is currently available in the annual catalog. During the month of September, we have a promotion going on called Perfect Partners, and you can get, there are six different stamp sets from either the annual or mini catalog that they have added coordinating dies. Now, this is one of my favorite sets of dies from Perfect Partners. The tree trimming dies, oh my gosh, you guys, you get 28 dies in this set, but it has three amazing labels, this adorable little basket, a little planter here, and a bunch of different things you can do with the trees. We've got a bunch of extra stars and ornaments and bows and other types of accessories. Look at this tiny little die right here. That's to give some texture. But I love these. Again, these are only available during the month of September. You can find those at stampinup.com or use my link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop, and take a look out for the perfect partners. There are, again, six um, stamp sets, but I this is my favorite of the few. I love the apple one as well, the apple harvest. I think that's what it's called. So we're gonna be using this tonight. The paper we're using is sort of hidden in the mini catalog. You will literally find it on the very last page, kind of across the spread, pages 86 and 87. This is actually a host set of paper. Now, um, you can purchase it for $18 in Stampin' Rewards. So if you place an order of 150 or more, you'll get a minimum $15 in Stampin' Rewards that you can apply to this paper. Now this is a mega pack of paper. It is 48 sheets of 12 by 12 paper. It's four sheets each of 12 double-sided designs. I'm gonna show you them really quickly. All occasion paper here. And the value of this pack of paper is $30, but you can get it for 18 with stamping rewards. I wanted to show you where trimming the tree was in the annual catalog, because the samples are beautiful. This is page 43 of the annual catalog beautiful samples. I love how they did this little scallop here on the card. That's really pretty. All right. Let's take a quick peek at this paper. I love this one. This is the paper we were going to use for the joy fold card. But let me go ahead and kind of flip these and show you what they look like. Let's get some space here. I showed this during my uh, sneak peek, but let's do this really quickly. These are the 12 double-sided designs, and you'll see that it is sort of all occasion fireworks and fall. Lots of great patterns for all year round. Bold, beautiful colors. This is so cute for Halloween. Now this little sour cream container would be adorable for Halloween as well, especially with this pattern. 
Love the ghosts. Got some wood grain here. Lots of black and white images as well. We're using this one for the treat holder. Love those ornaments. And the last one here, black and white fireworks and scallops. So great, great pack of paper. I'm going to have a hard time using it all because it is so much paper. But let's go ahead and jump into our treat holder. So um, this just measures four inches by four inches, which, which means you can get nine of these out of a sheet of 12 by 12. 12 by 12 works a little bit better because you won't have any paper excess. But if you have, um, I'm looking at little iridescent on my mat. If you have six by six, obviously you'll have sort of a two inch and two inch strip of excess, but we're going to go ahead and flip this over. It doesn't matter which, well, it does matter which direction of the paper, but because this is a square piece, you don't have to be super conscious of the pattern other than where we're going to put the tear and tape. So I'm going to flip this over because I want this pattern to be on the outside. Now, many of you have probably made sour cream containers before. They're so fun, quick, and easy to create, but I loved this size. I think the other ones I've ever created have been with six by six. So I am running a strip along the left side here, left or right works, but we've got our pattern going up and down, flipping this over and we've got it along the left side. And then I'm just gonna put tear and tape right along the bottom of this pattern here. Okay, again, paying attention to the direction of the paper. If you wanted to, you could also put some along the top, but I'm actually just gonna use a staple to close it. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take my take your pick tool. I do want to just start to peel away a little bit of this bottom one, okay? I'm just gonna peel it away and have that kind of hanging out so that I can get um, access to pull that off. And you could either pull from either side. Maybe this side will be easier. I, oh no, we'll do this one. <laughs> And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off the back, okay? So let me show you that up close. We've got tear and tape along the edge. I'm pulling that back off. You can use liquid glue as well. It's gonna take you a while to hold it into place. So I love tear and tape for this. Again, make sure you've got that loose here. And we're basically just gonna kind of roll this into a tube, but I want to make sure that I'm careful about lining up this edge with the tear and tape, so. Sometimes it's easier to go upside down. I'm gonna start by lining up sort of the edge there. And I'm gonna kind of pinch it, okay? And then I'm gonna line up the top edge. I'm going in about a quarter of an inch, which we're just making this tube here. Let's see, there we go. Okay, so top and bottom, and then we can just smooth this in using our index fingers and thumbs. So you're kind of starting with a tube here, okay? Now this is gonna be our top. Again, we're paying attention to the pattern here. And then I've got this tear and tape along the bottom. We wanna make sure that when we pinch the top here, we sort of want our seam to be either over to the a third from the left or a third from the right. I'm gonna just dry pinch it here so we can kind of get an idea of how we want this to close. Okay, so I've got my seam is sort of right there off center. I'm gonna pull that tear and tape out. We had that little pull tab there. I'm pinching it from the top and then I'm gonna do the opposite direction along the bottom. Okay, and then we're just gonna pinch right where that tear and tape is. Now, I have had sour cream containers sort of pop open over time. My best advice is to just make sure that you come in and burnish this along the bottom really well. You can also do some score lines if you like to have sort of that crimped look, but I just wanna make sure that I burnish there really well. Okay, now we've got this open. We're gonna put our little treat in here. So I'm just gonna grab a Hershey's nugget. You could cover that with paper if you wanted to and just drop that right into the treat pouch. Okay, so it's pretty easy to get these in and out like so, okay? Now I'm gonna have the wide part of my sour cream container look like this. You could do it either way. Basically you do it that way if you wanted it to look this way and decorate it along the bottom with some type of circle die or something like that. I'm gonna decorate it from the top like my inspiration project here, okay? So let me go ahead and put this off to the side. I have got a strip of shaded spruce. This measures just under one inch so that it'll fit in the pick-a-punch uh, that I've chosen by five and a half. So one by five and a half. 
And I'm gonna bring in the banners pick a punch and we're gonna do this banner end, which I love. You could do the uh, either one. I'm gonna go ahead and feed that in. You do kind of have to go at a little bit of an angle because this is the widest that will fit in that punch. And then I like to flip it upside down and just make sure that that is centered. We'll do both ends. Again, I love punching up to upside down. It gives me a lot more control about where I'm punching. And I forgot to tell you, I scored this right in the middle. So we did one by five and a half inches and I scored in the middle at two and three quarters. So I can just go ahead and fold and burnish there. Okay, now we're gonna fit that right over the top. This is actually how we're gonna close it. I still have my old mini stapler from Stampin' Up. And I'm going to, I'm trying to pay attention to where the back is here. I'm gonna take my stapler. I'm actually gonna staple it from the back just cause that's gonna give it a nicer finish. And I'm going down about a half of an inch. So on the back, you'll see the flat stapler. Now this is just, you can get mini staplers from any office supply store. Regular size staplers work as well. And then the front we're gonna cover, I've got my <laughs> nail oil is getting on that, always with the dark card stocks. Um, we're gonna go ahead and apply our sentiment, which I've done this ahead of time. This is just heat embossed in white and die cut, but look at the detail on that die cut. This is coming from, there's one little hole here that didn't get punched out. This is coming from the tree trimming dies, and it's this one here. It's my favorite in the whole set of dies. But I heat emboss it in white, and then I die cut it. And then I die cut one piece, so this is Poppy Parade. I always forget to tell you all the colors. Poppy Parade and Granny Apple Green. That one is also from the Tree Trimming Dies die set. Love that, it's got a little bit of stitching, although we're gonna kind of cover it up on this project. But I love the way that that looks layered behind the Poppy Parade. Cute, right? So, so easy and a great project to do for multiples. Again, you can get nine of these out of a sheet of 12 by 12. I'm just gonna put a little bit of liquid glue right along the center of that granny apple green piece. And we'll center this liquid glue I love for this because we can center, get that right where we want it lined up. Use your silicone mat if you're a little heavy handed with your liquid glue. And then I'm just gonna take a trio of dimensionals right down the center. And then we'll pop that right up here. We're gonna actually cover the staple, okay? So that's why we did the flat staple on the back, just a nicer look there. And then I'm gonna grab a rhinestone, which I go through these things like candy. Or do I go through my candy like I go through my rhinestones? Which way does it go? And I'm just gonna pop that right on the bottom for a little bit of bling. Brian doesn't like candy, so I get it all. <laughs> and there we have it. Super quick and easy sour cream treat container using that fun paper. I don't even think I told you the name of the paper. Celebrate everything, how fitting is that? But that's the paper we use, that host paper. Such a quick and easy treat holder and I've got that Hershey's Nugget in there or if you can find it, I see you guys chatting in here, but the Ethel M chocolates. How cute is that little chocolate? All right, so that is project number one. Quick and easy and cute, made easy with the tree trimming, trimming the tree bundle and the tree trimming dies. All right, let's jump into our quick and easy joy fold card. <clears throat> I'm gonna get a bunch of pieces and parts out here first and then we will um, assemble this. I did a lot of work ahead of time. I'm still dealing with a bit of the COVID fatigue so I wanted to make sure I was ready for y'all tonight. So for the card base, I've got my measurements written here. This is polished pink and it measures eight and a half inches by four and a quarter inches and then I scored it at three inches. So there's the score line there. So eight and a half by four and a quarter, scored at three on the long side. I'm gonna turn that valley score line into a mountain fold. The next piece of polished pink that I have measures eight and a half by three. 
scored in the middle at four and a quarter. Again, taking that valley score line and turning it into a mountain fold. Okay, so we've got these two pieces and then from that awesome Celebrate Everything Designer Series paper, the largest piece measures five and a quarter by four. I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down right on the inside. Uh, let's get liquid glue here. Just a quick plug, if you've got questions tonight and you're new here, put a Q colon in front of your question and that will help us cue your question for um, the end of the live stream. All right, so we've got that piece there. Then I've got two pieces that measure four by two and three quarters. So again, that's four inches by two and three quarters. If you cut a strip to four inches of your pattern paper. So cut four inches and then you can do five and a quarter and then two pieces at two and three quarters. Just kind of sh visualizing how that is. So we're gonna adhere this to both the front and the inside because I felt like the inside looked a little naked without it. So this will go on the front. I love this little pattern with the mistletoe and the gingerbread men, the candies. Really festive for the holidays. Now I shared a Joyfold card on my blog. It was one of my most popular projects from four years ago, 2018. I think it was April of 2018. And I came back and tweaked it just slightly so that this layered piece on the inside has sort of an equidistant or equidistant around all four sides. Anyways, there is that. Let me grab the basic white here. And then same measurements with the basic white. These both measure four inches by two and three quarters. So these two smaller pieces and the two white pieces, they're all the same size, four by two and three quarters, two DSP, two basic white or whatever color you're gonna use. We're gonna adhere one to the front of this little inside card and one to the inside. And one of our uh, my team meetings we had last night, Katie Ferguson shared a similar project to this and it reminded me, oh yeah, I love that Joyfold card. So I went back and revisited my blog and bringing it back to life again. All right, and then this one's just gonna go on the inside. This is where you'll write your note to the recipient. It looks a little funny with the white, but the white's really gonna make this Christmas tree pop. And we're gonna go ahead and glue this to the inside of our card. So I'm just gonna flip on the back side of this and do liquid glue, somewhat generous here. And for me, it's just easiest to keep it folded. And then I will, using liquid glue, just slide that into place, but making sure that what I see of this black pattern designer series paper is all about the same width, top to bottom, left to right. Kind of get it started and then I can open it up. That gives me a little bit more leverage in here to press it into place. Having it closed really helps centering it. Okay, so this is gonna go basically the flap up and down. Now on my blog post from 2018, my card was designed to open this way, sort of landscape, but this is also a really cute way to do it as well. And as I was looking at it, it looks a lot like one of the gift card holders that I've shared, but that would have, you know me and my measurements, it wouldn't have messed up the measurements, but I like the fact that the inner piece and the outside piece both start at eight and a half inches long. So actually, what you can do is just with glue dots, stick a um, gift card inside there, which I'm just gonna grab one. I don't know that I have anybody I would give babies R Us to, but this is just one of the um, gift cards that I have. I'm just gonna grab two glue dots. Oops. 
Now, if you have sort of the removable glue dots, you might prefer that for the recipient. You know, like the ones that we get when you get your new, what is it, credit cards in the mail, that kind of like gummy, they're not super sticky like our glue dots, but this will work fine. So I'm just gonna stick that there. Nice little surprise for the recipient. This will still fit in a normal medium card. Now let's go ahead and do a little bit of stamping and create this beautiful Christmas tree. I've got one stamped already just in case I mess up, but I'm gonna use my Stamparatus because this is one of those cards that you'll probably wanna make multiples of. So I have die cut out of basic white, the Christmas tree. This is the largest tree in the tree trimming dies set. <clears throat> And I've already set up a template in my Stamparatus, but let me walk you through how I did that. So I just took a quarter sheet of basic white cardstock. I like to have my stamp set under here for a little bit of leverage, so apologies for the glare there. Um, so I did a quarter sheet of basic white, and then I lined up just, I did my first larger Christmas tree stamp from the trimming, trimming the tree stamp set. And then I inked that up in shaded spruce, stamped it on the quarter sheet. Then I flipped this over, just walking you through the steps here, lined up that inside piece that's gonna give an accent of granny apple green, and then stamped that. Then I took my quarter sheet, ran it through the die cutting machine so that I now have this template. So now what I can do is cut a bunch of blanks of the trees and all I have to do then is fit the blank right in that cutout there. I've got my magnet holding the template in place. And then this gives me an opportunity, especially with photopolymer stamps. I love the opportunity to stamp a couple times if I need to. So we'll do one. And press that in place. Now that's gonna stick to the stamp because these are good and sticky. I'm gonna do it one more time to get some good coverage there. There we go. We're gonna put it back. Look at how nice that looks with that second stamp. And I'm just gonna flip this around I get ink on myself, hold on, wipe that off. So this is Granny Apple Green. We're using Shaded Spruce and Granny Apple Green. And this is just gonna give some accents inside the tree here. It's gonna look a lot darker than it will dry. And that looks pretty good. Now, if you can't get your die cut out of your Piece. Just use your take your pick tool. You could use the putty end or the pokey tool end, the piercing end. But there's the detail on that tree. And again, that granny apple green is going to dry a little bit lighter. Same with the shaded spruce, but really beautiful tree. Now the sample in the catalog is sort of opposite. They did a lighter green on the outside and darker green on the inside. Both look really beautiful with that stamp set. Get that ink pads cleaned up before I make a mess. Wait until you see this basket up close. So I cut this out of gold foil, which is available in the annual catalog. But look at the detail on that. It does embossing and cutting. So that's going to be the base. I also heat embossed in white Happy Holidays from the Trimming the Tree stamp set onto polished pink and then die cut it with that really beautiful tag that we used in the sour cream container. And then I've got a really cute little gold foil star. Again, that comes from the Trimming the Tree and you actually get five of those in your die set. So you can cut a whole bunch at once. Love that. All right, so bringing our card back here, I'm gonna start by layering the basket, which this would look beautiful in crumb cake or soft suede. I love the detail on it. So just liquid glue on that. I'm gonna adhere that down towards the bottom of the front of the card here. Then I'm gonna take some dimensionals on the back of our tree, 
four looks good. Stick into myself here. We're going to pop that up over our gold basket here, like so. I'm just going to grab a mini glue dot and get into the end of my roll. Almost lost that star. Here we go. So that's what usually happens here on the Paper Pixie. Oh, this went onto my dress. Um, I lose stuff that's right in front of me <laughs> often. And I know it happens to a lot of you. So I'm just gonna pop that right up on the top of our tree here with a mini glue dot. Look how cute that is. I love that star. Stars are one of my favorites. And then we've already got dimensional, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of liquid glue on the back side of the sentiment piece. And then we're gonna just pop that up right on the front of our tree. I didn't think it covered it up too much. Get my mess cleaned up so you can see this up close. And this fun designer series paper pattern, I just thought was so fun to go with that Christmas tree. And then you've got the, the shiny gold foil elements. Silver would be beautiful too. So this opens this way and then down for a little surprise Babies R Us gift card. Um, but like a coffee card would be great in here. Um, but then you've got this room to, you can either stamp something on there or write a little note to the recipient. So those are tonight's projects. We've got a quick and easy sour cream container using a four by four inch piece of designer series paper. Again, um, inspired by this adorable treat holder from a friend that I can't remember her name from backstage. I've got a Hershey's nugget in mine. She shared hers with the Ethel M chocolate. And then we've got our joy fold card. So we are using the, just to recap, the trimming the tree bundle. These dies are available only during the month of September in the Perfect Partners promotion. I'm also using the Celebrate Everything Host Designer Series paper for both of these projects, which I love, great for all year um, occasions and every occasion as well. So those are tonight's projects. I will update the description to make sure you've got a link to purchase the trimming the tree bundle or the dies or any, you may already have the, the stamp set from the annual catalog and as well as links to the weekly deals and tomorrow's 24 hour stamp sale. I am going to now jump into our Q and A segment. So let me go ahead and get that teed up so we can get to your questions. This is one of my favorite parts of the live stream. You guys ask great questions. I love it. All right, let me go ahead and tee this up. All right, Evelyn, bonjour, welcome. Hello, Bobby. I am feeling much more better. Um, energy, I think each day is getting better, but we're not quite there yet. So the COVID fatigue. Hey there, Mr. B, did you see that? <laughs> um, do I give Brian a discount? Hmm, have you ever bought anything from Stampin' Up? <laughs> no, I don't actually, you have had, I have ordered a couple things for you. I feel like 12 by 12 card stock. You were doing some templates, but yes, I give them my discount. <laughs> um, uh, the sale, Andrea, is for, it should be all markets. So you should have that sale in um, Australia as well, I believe. Um, I don't know that for sure though, but check your, um, I think you're a current demonstrator. Check your um, current promotions to see if that will drop. Um, it's probably 24 hour stamp sale time for you now because I believe it is Thursday morning for you. But yeah, take a look at that. Hello, Sandy. Um, oh, thanks, Bobby. They love their um, their Lego and their cards for sure. Ethel M's chocolate in Las Vegas. Awesome. Thanks, Lorraine. I have to check it out. They also sell Ethel M. You know what? I checked on Amazon. I couldn't find the minis, but I did see the regular size. So yeah, I'll be on the lookout for that. Oh, it's expensive. It's well, oh, well, that means it's good, right? <laughs> How does it open without tearing it all apart? So when you open it, Karen, um, I did a staple on the top. And so the recipient could pull the staple out. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not really, it's, you know, it's not one of those projects that is intended to, you know, go back and forth and get in and out of. It's just a really fun way to give a little treat. Um, but 
if you use a staple, it's a little bit easier to open the top than if you did tear and tape on both the top and the bottom. So just something to keep in mind, total personal preference for that. I love to make card sets and give them away. If I want to donate a set and they want to auction it as a fundraiser towards a nonprofit organization, would the cards still need the angel policy? Yes, Viva La Vaca. Um, any type, any, whether you're selling or donating, they do need the copyright Stampin' Up stamp set on the back as per the angel policy, which you can actually find that at stampinup.com. I think it's at the bottom of the page. There is a link to the angel policy so you can read through that but just somewhere on there. They've got um, the limited edition stamp set is the current um, angel policy stamp set, and they've got a really small copyright Stampin' Up! set. Just needs to be somewhere on the project because you just never know where those cards are going, and that just pr protects the Stampin' Up! copyrighted stamp images. Uh, Fiona, great question. I think we had this one last week too. Do I ever use the other end of my liquid glue? I do not. I've tried it. I didn't like it. I didn't have as much control. Um, I always use the pen tip for sure. Where can I buy some of the gummy glue dots used on credit card mailing? So I know that Uline carries them, but you get them in like big bulk. I'm sure you can find them at Hobby Lobby or Michael's or Joann's, um, but they are the repositionable glue dots, I think is what they're called. Um, either repositionable or removable. So our mini glue dots are fairly permanent, although if you take your time, you can usually separate them. But yeah, the removable ones are a little bit better, especially for, because um, the recipient wouldn't necessarily know that there's glue dots under there. So definitely any craft store, I'm sure Amazon has them as well. If I can find them, um, I may pop them on my favorites page. Um, but yeah, Uline, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, those types of places. Um, my hubby's name is spelled Brian with a Y. Love the cur card. If it wasn't that I have my Christmas... Oh, you already have them done, Bobby. Props to you. Holy cow, that's amazing. Um, well, definitely the Joyfold card is perfect for all occasions. Doesn't have to be Christmas. Um, it's one of my go-to fancy folds because they're really easy to put together and they kind of pack a punch. Sort of like a card in a card with the way that they open. Um, I just kind of love the mechanism of it. And it doesn't use a lot of cardstock, so love that. <clears throat> For your dies, do you put it in with your stamps or separate? I keep them separate, Sandra, because I will oftentimes use my dies not necessarily with the coordinating stamp set. Like a lot of the dies, especially the tree trimming dies, those label dies that are in there, I could use those with a whole bunch of different sentiment stamp sets. So I have all my dies in one place, usually separated by catalog and then in alphabetical order, separate from the stamp sets. But I do, um, on the label for my things, I say which stamp set it goes to. Now, ultimately, I would like to say put a label on the stamp sets kind of going the other direction. So which dies just to make it a little bit easier. I've only really done that with my dies, but I have the best intentions of doing that on my stamp set. So I do keep them separate. Great question. Um, can you get that bundle with Pixie Perks? You can, Nita. Actually, I've had a few customers that have done that for sure. Um, the trimming the tree bundle. As long as it's still available, again, the dies are while supplies last, so they have the potential to sell out before September 30th. But yes, that would be an eligible bundle for a Pixie, two Pixie Perks rewards. Let's see, could you make it a gift card holder instead of adhere the gift card with glue dots? You ab absolutely could, Mary Kay. Um, I would actually do, um, I'm thinking out loud, you probably would want to do a full card front. So instead, this one started with eight and a half by four and a quarter. I would do, now my brain just stopped working for a second. Eight and a half by four and a quarter. You would want to do 11 by four and a quarter, but then you're gonna wanna score it at, um, I've got a project on my blog that has a gift card holder. Brian's going to try to look really quickly, but you do a score line and then basically you would do it basically two score lines where you would then fold that extra piece in. And then if you put tear and tape on the edge, I'm sorry if this is totally confusing, but you'd fold that over itself and then you've created a little pocket to put the gift card in. Um, try fun fold gift card holder. 
I'll see when you pop it up if there if it pops up for me. We'll try to get you an answer for that, Mary Kay. Um, any sneak about a million dollar German demos set? Um, I think you're talking about the welcoming home stamp set. I'm not positive because I'm not sure I know whose stamp set it is, but there is a sneak peek early release of a bundle from the mini catalog that they have available for um, the peaceful deer one. That's probably a good one. Um, welcoming home, I think is the bundle in for world card making day, which is on October 1st, Stampin' Up! is offering three bundles. Two of them are already in the current catalogs, but there is an upcoming one that I believe is a million dollar set. I'm just not sure whose it is. Um, but that is available for purchase as of September 1st. Okay. Do I have any tips on opening up cardstock packaging without damaging the paper? Ooh, Brenda, that is a good question. So the way that I open, ooh, I'm going to, let me see if I can demonstrate this. Hold on. Because I think I've got a pack that is not open yet. I don't know if this will help you. Let's see. I've got a pack of uh, basic white. So this is how I do it. I look for the corner that has um, sort of the most extra... Uh, plastic and I just kind of pull on the corner and I've never had problems so I just pull my hands have lotion on them I just start to pull like that and I don't have any problems with the corners getting damaged and then it just kind of pulls right along that seam and then I've got basically that pack is ready to come out of the plastic I don't know if that helped you but I just that's how I've always done it just kind of found a corner and pulled down or opposite from the corner See if I can do it again on this corner. Probably gonna give me a hard time because I've already loosened it. But yeah, it just starts to break there. But I've never had any issues with the corners getting damaged. So I hope that helps you. <clears throat> Let's see. Could you use Velcro dots on the banner to close the project? You could do that, Kathy, for sure. Um, you'd wanna do probably Velcro dots, I don't know, somewhere in the middle maybe? But yeah, you'd have to use um, two pairs of them. So there's that. Although the recipient might, oh, hold on. I'm talking to you like, <laughs> I'm not sharing the questions here. Um, I do think that might confuse the recipient a little bit just because they wouldn't, well, actually you wouldn't have to do two pairs. You could just do one. You could glue the back and then just have the front one. I'm doing the motion like you can see it, but glue the back, just have the front one be with, um, Velcro, that might work. Maybe magnets, but I love the quick, the quickness of the uh, staples, especially if you're going to make multiples. Have you ever used a piece of low-tech tape behind your tree placeholder in the Stamparatus? I have not. Um, I usually just, um, I've mentioned it before, I'm kind of a lazy stamper, and so especially when I'm making multiples, I wanna be as fast as I can. I think that would probably slow me down, but I've done that before with, um, what have I used the low tech? I don't even remember, it's not coming to my mind right now, but I have used it before to hold things into place. I'm not sure I would do it for that because it'll slow me down, but you could absolutely try that. Um, great suggestion. I have my dies and stamps labeled with their corresponding set. Does make things easier. Yeah, absolutely, Lonnie. I totally agree. Oh, Geneva, thank you. You made 110 of the little chap ice treat boxes with a quilt retreat theme. Huge hit. Everyone loved them. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. It's so Those were so fun to make. That was from a couple of weeks ago, my chocolate and chapstick treat holder that Geneva is talking about. That's fantastic. All right, you guys, we have reached the end of the questions. We're a little early tonight. It's quarter to nine. Last week I went, what, like 90 minutes. So um, I appreciate you all being here live. Thanks to those of you watching on the replay. Again, I'll update the description with links to things. And we will update the thumbnail as well with pictures of the projects. 
and eventually these projects will make it onto my blog. I am so behind right now, but I promise you that the projects will make it to the blog for your future reference. So tonight's projects were easy. I'll probably put the measurements for you in the description as well, because I know many of you will be itching to try these projects. I'm so grateful again for you joining me and watching me. If you've got tips or tricks, remember to like, follow, and subscribe. I will be live again next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 256 of Live with the Paper Pixie. Grateful that you're here. Have a wonderful and blessed week, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Take care. Bye.